Okay, so it works now. Mm -hmm. Looks good. <clears throat> yes. Uh, okay. Do you want it? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Let's see, which way is better? Um, well, like I guess most people are using PCs, so probably but whatever works best for you. Uh, let's let's try. Um... <laughs> Sorry, well, it's, uh, it's better. Yeah, this is a little bit bigger, right? For um, PCs, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go with this. Yeah. Good. Okay. So please, please start. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It's it's nice to see uh, all of you. Um, so today I'll, I'll talk about uh, some joint work uh, in progress uh, with Mark Shimizono, my colleague here at, at Virginia Tech, uh, and uh, Josh Wen, who is a postdoc at Northeastern. Um, so uh, let me write the title here. So we... Donald. Operators. <laughs> okay, uh, so so like I said, uh, joint work with Mark uh, Shimizono. Mark and I have actually been thinking about Reith McDonald polynomials for for quite a while, and we're very happy to have sort of our, our first result uh, on this. Uh, so so this one is actually uh, it's it's two going to be two works. Uh, so this one is already on the archive. It's, it's more of a, a brief uh, announcement of, of the result. And, uh, and then we're writing a longer paper uh, with uh, Josh. When? So I'll call this one OSW and this one is in. Okay, so uh, first let me kind of give an overview of uh, what I plan to talk about. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk about the ordinary McDonald polynomials. Uh, so P lambda. And these were introduced uh, in the uh, late 1980s uh, by Ian McDonald. And uh, there were a number of uh, sort of sources of input or, or motivation for, for constructing these. Um, and so I'll, I'll review uh, some of those in the talk. So we have sort of input from algebraic combinatorics, uh, from uh, representation theory, from math physics, uh, sort of initially, uh, those were the uh, main uh, inputs or, or sources uh, for, for constructing these objects. Uh, but, but later, um, Mark Heyman uh, realized that a really important connection to geometry, um, which is uh, the geometry of Hilbert schemes. And uh, so this is due, this connection is due to Heyman. Uh, and, and by the way, so when I talk about McDonald polynomials in this talk, um, these are uh, only the, uh, if I say ordinary McDonald polynomials, I'm just talking about type A, so type, type GLN. There are in fact McDonald polynomials for any root system, but uh, for this talk, if I, if I say ordinary McDonald, I, I just mean this. Um, and so, Heyman uh, established this connection to geometry of Hilbert schemes uh, in order to prove uh, a very important conjecture of McDonald called the positivity conjecture about these. So, and so that was uh, sort of the, the driving motivation uh, for doing this. And uh, uh, since, since Heyman's work, this has become a very uh, influential point of view. Uh, on the subject. So this has to do with uh, Hilbert schemes of points in the plane. And, uh, and uh, so what this is, is it's a, a particularly nice uh, resolution of uh, this symmetric product. So n points in the plane, but an unordered collection of n points in the plane. And um, yeah, so the way it's kind of McDonald theory started was, was up here with sort of these 
these inputs. Uh, for me, mainly, mainly kind of this this point of view and, and representation theory. Um, and then later, this connection to geometry uh, was discovered by Heyman and became very uh, influential on the subject. So this was important not just because it resolved uh, the positivity conjecture. Uh, so so this uh, this led to uh, See. But this point of view was, was also important um, because it, it suggested a new uh, generalization, not the root systems version of McDonald theory, but, but an altogether new, new version of McDonald polynomials called brief. Uh, so in my talk, uh, I'll call these P lambda gamma. Okay. And uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, the starting point was the geometry. Okay. Uh, so, so really, uh, this began with geometry. And uh, kind of the point of, of my talk is that we're, we're trying now to understand these polynomials more directly. Uh, but let me say what the geometry is. So uh, this is also due to Heyman uh, conjecturally, and then uh, the, the foundational result uh, on the Bezerkov, uh, Nikolov, and uh, Finkelberg. Uh, Ezra Kevinkov and Finkelberg, uh, Michael, uh, uh, proved uh, Heyman's conjecture on, on these. So, uh, so what, what's the setup here? It's you have uh, gamma in SL2C. Uh, Heyman actually conjectured something more general. Uh, Heyman made a conjecture for any finite subgroup, but I'll take this a cyclic subgroup for most of what I say. So what this is, is it's the setting of the McKay correspondence. Okay, so I have a finite subgroup. And uh, well, because this is a subgroup of uh, two by two matrices, uh, it naturally acts on C2 and, and on the Hilbert scheme. Okay. And, uh, and so the geometric setting that, that Heyman proposed was uh, to look at, I'm going to take a different M here, Hilbert MC to look at the fixed locus. And then uh, this is actually dis disconnected, but uh, I'll label a component uh, of it by chi. And uh, what happens here is you get a resolution. Uh, so you have different M and N here, but uh, you get a resolution of uh, this quotient. And gamma N is a wreath product. So this is actually the origin of, of the word wreath here is that it has to do with this, this singularity, okay? So C2 to the N mod gamma N and gamma N oops, is the uh, nth Cartesian power of gamma. So gamma cross itself uh, N times semi-direct product with the symmetric group. So SN is the, the symmetric group. I don't, don't think I said that. But, um, so this was sort of the, uh, the starting point uh, for the wreath theory. And uh, the point then of- I'm sorry, and then what is chi? Ah, so chi, um, I'll say later, um, but uh, it's, a, it's a character of gamma. So of this, this finite group. Okay. And, and that designates a, a component of the, this fixed uh, set. Yeah. Okay, thanks. yeah. Um, and, and so, so the point is now we want to understand, uh, connections to algebraic combinatorics, uh, representation theory, uh, and, and so on, um, using, uh, kind of more direct methods. So the, the, uh, the desire is to have 
kind of a, a direct approach to these these polynomials, uh, like what what we had at the, the origins of McDonald theory. Okay, so these are some sort of uh, more mysterious geometric objects, and we want to understand them concretely. Okay, uh, so so that's the plan. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, let me. Uh, keep, I think I need to go down. Can I go down for a new page, or sorry, there we go. Okay. Um, maybe I can make it even bigger. Okay, so let's start a little bit with the ordinary McDonald polynomials. Let's say a little bit about them. Uh, so these are of type. GL capital N. And um, so there are many ways to sort of get your hands on these. Uh, I'm going to use the operator way because that's ultimately what our result is about for, for Reef uh, McDonald polynomials. So, uh, so there's a difference operator M called the McDonald difference operator nowadays. Uh, so uh, so N is a fixed. Uh, positive integer. And uh, this is going to be acting on, so I have some variables, x1 up to xn. And then I have uh, two sort of additional variables, q and t, but I'll, I'll think of them as belonging to the ground field. Uh, so these are, these are just indeterminates. Uh, and uh, but I really think of think of them as parameters rather than than variables. So this operator, um, I'll say what this is in just a second. So it has a a shift on on the variable x k, and then multiplication uh, by a rational function that looks like this. So t x. Okay, so uh, this TQ F Okay, so uh, what this is is uh, a shift of the kth variable. So it's a, a discrete version of the uh, derivative. It's a shift uh, operator. Uh, multiplicative shift by Q. So Q. <coughs> okay. Um, so uh, this is the McDonald difference operator. Okay, and uh, what it is is it's an operator on symmetric polynomials. Okay, uh, so the uh, it's kind of first uh, observation is that if you define the space lambda n, so uh, I'm going to say k uh, x one uh, s n. So the ground field is this field of rational functions in Q and T. And um, I look at symmetric polynomials uh, in these n variables uh, with coefficients in K. Um, okay, so the, the Q parameter is involved in this, this shift and then the T, the T figures in here. Um, the idea from McDonald theory is that the whole theory depends on these parameters Q and T. And if they are specialized to different values, you recover uh, some familiar objects from various fields or so representation theory, certain uh, spherical functions uh, or, or certain other symmetric polynomials uh, of interest. Um, so, um, right. So the first sort of claim that's, that's a nice exercise if you haven't seen this before is that uh, M, uh, Sends lambda n to lambda. Okay, so this is um, uh, a nice thing to do if you, if you haven't worked with this before. So m will not 
if you start with a polynomial which is not symmetric and you apply M, you won't get a polynomial back. Uh, but if you if you start with a symmetric polynomial, you'll get a symmetric polynomial back. Okay. Um, and then so uh, McDonald's uh, kind of one of the foundational results in, in the theory of McDonald polynomials is that this M X diagonally on that to N. Okay. So it has an eigenbasis. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so let me try to write this here. Let me see. Oh, I do have quite a bit more space. That's good. With uh, eigenbasis. P lambda. So what is lambda? If you want to have a basis uh, for symmetric polynomials and n variables, a natural indexing set is uh, partitions. Uh, it looks like there's quite a delay. Uh, so I just wrote something and I'm not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, we also don't see it. Okay, let's We, we can hear what you are saying, but we can't see. Okay, let's see if it, if it shows up. Okay, uh, not yet. Hopefully, hopefully the internet is... That's strange. Yeah. So it disappeared. Okay, let me see what's happening here. Uh -huh. Can you still see me? We can see you, but we can't see your iPad. Uh, it looks like somehow I was kicked out of the, on my iPad, I was removed from the meeting. So let me just uh, rejoin. Yeah. Okay, hopefully that won't happen again. <clears throat> okay, so we see the iPad now. Now we see the screen. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. Hopefully no, no that problem. won't happen again. Uh, uh, so McDonald proved that this operator M uh, has an eigenbasis. Uh, these are exactly the these are the McDonald polynomials. Um, um, and let me just show you a little bit what they look like. So uh, such that, okay. So um, P, P lambda looks like this. So it has leading term, which is uh, uh, monomial symmetric polynomial. So uh, it's just a sum of uh, z1 to the mu1, zn to the mu n, where mu belongs to the sn orbit of lambda. So mu is a rearrangement of, of lambda. And um, that's the leading term. And then there are lower terms. And then the Oop, sorry, the, the eigenvalues uh, are also very explicit. And this is, uh, this is important for applications. Um, so Q, let's see, I think it's like this. Q to the lambda n. Okay. So these are called the McDonald polynomials uh, in type A, um, in type GLN. They're the eigen, uh, eigen functions of this operator in, in symmetric polynomials. So just to show you what they look like, um, here's a small example. So P two zero. So capital N is two and lambda is the partition two zero. So I might look at it like this. Okay, so I, if, if you think in terms of the Young diagram, you have two boxes in a single row. And uh, so this looks like uh, x1 squared plus x2 squared. That's the leading term. And then um, the lower term looks, there's just a single lower term here. And then uh, a very nice uh, coefficient. Uh, there it is. Okay, so one plus Q 
one minus T, one minus QT. Okay, uh, so so lower terms means uh, in in the dominance uh, in. Uh, order uh, on, on partitions. Uh, so um, this, this corresponds to the partition uh, one, one like this. And that, that's lower than uh, two, zero in, in the, the dominant sort. So from two, zero, uh, one, one in the dominant order. So um, what happens with McDonald polynomials is, um, well, you can actually, you can use the operator uh, to find these because the operator acts triangularly. Uh, so, uh, so it's pretty, pretty nice computationally for finding these eigenfunctions. And uh, what happens is you don't get just random uh, rational functions in Q and T, they're, they're highly structured and, and very interesting rational functions here. Um, so a lot of efforts in McDonald theory go into understanding uh, exactly what, what these coefficients are and uh, what types of structures ex explain uh, explain why they're so nice and, and such things. Um, okay. So um, let me move on, I guess. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the geometry a little bit. Um, so this is one of the main reasons uh, people continue to study uh, McDonald polynomials. One, one of the reasons is this connection to Hilbert uh, schemes. Okay, so Hilbert schemes are much more general. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at a very uh, special case, uh, Hilbert schemes of points in the plane. And, um, uh, so when I write hill n, this is hill n c2. And um, so, so what this is, is uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a, it's a resolution of this quotient singularity. And, um, and you can describe the points uh, up here very, concretely, if you just care about the set of uh, points, and you can say, uh, this is the set of all ideals. The idea is that if you have, if you have some points down here, uh, they, they describe uh, a zero dimensional subscheme of, of, of C2. So you have these points in C2. And uh, the, the association is, is you replace that uh, by an ideal. So an ideal, uh, ideal and uh, such that uh, the dimension of uh, CXY is N. So it's finite dimension, finite co-dimensional and the dimension of the quotient is exactly N. Okay. Um, so the, this is a resolution. <coughs> Of singularities that is very well known and much studied, very, very nice uh, resolution. And um, this map here sends the ideal to uh, this collection of points. So I have a point uh, together with uh, multiplicity. Okay. And uh, what this, what this guy is here is it's, how many times that, that point uh, occurs in the vanishing set, but it's, uh, you can say it's the length of uh, I mod I localized at, at, uh, at P, at the maximal ideal corresponding to P. Um, so this, is, this map is called the Hilbert Chow morphism. Uh, and uh, so, so yeah, uh, why should, uh, I'll do some examples in, in just a sec of, of points here um, upstairs, um, but what's the idea here? Why should this be related to anything I talked about previously? Um, so the idea 
uh, we're, we're going to work with K-theory. Um, but, but the idea is that if I want to do something K-theoretic here, okay, um, I might look at, um, you know, that's, that's very singular, but um, I might look at uh, C2N, SN. So um, the equivariant K-theory with respect to SN of uh, C2N would be some kind of uh, object uh, related to this, and then hopefully uh, related to this resolution. And uh, just sort of to pin things down, why, why should this be related to symmetric, symmetric polynomials is, uh, well, there's this uh, Tom isomorphism. And then this, uh, so uh, related, because you, you have an affine space, you can, it can be contracted to a point, basically. And then this is the representation ring of SN, okay? And then, um, and then this is isomorphic to um, part of symmetric functions. So lambda, uh, let's call it, um, let's put the N up here. Uh, let's, let's just do it like this. Okay. Um, so this is the Frobenius character. And um, I don't really like that N there. Um, let's put it here, maybe. Uh, so what this is over here is this is uh, symmetric functions um, of degree, so in, infinitely many variables and degree M or N, sorry. Okay, so this you have this chain of isomorphisms connecting this, this K group uh, to symmetric functions. And this is why you might expect that this, this geometry would be relevant for symmetric polynomials. Um, there, there's also, uh, a natural torus action. Um, so also, this group, uh, two-dimensional torus, acts on the plane, C2, and uh, will act on everything here um, in a natural way. Uh, so this will act on uh, hill N. Uh, and and um, this is additional equivariance that's, uh, that, that will be important. So um, I may be getting a little bit ahead of myself here, um, but if we look at the representation ring of T, we, we'll think of this as uh, Laurent polynomials in, in Q and T. Uh, so you have a two-dimensional torus, its representation ring is uh, isomorphic to a ring of Laurent polynomials. And, um, and so this is how this, this field K will come up. So if I look at frac of RT, this will be isomorphic to K, which I defined as Q. Okay. So these are kind of the reasons this setting is good uh, or looks, looks kind of good for, for McDonald theory potentially. Um, so let me, let me just do an example first. Um, I don't know, maybe everyone knows this uh, already, but can't hurt, I think, to do, do an example. Um, so um, here, here's an L, some important elements here. So I lambda. Okay, so this is X to lambda one. Uh, and so on. So if I, if you take any partition, I'm sort of allowing the length to be arbitrary now. Okay. Um, you can form this uh, monomial ideal, which has generators uh, like this. Okay. Uh, and uh, in order to, to be in, so I want this to be in build N, uh, I need this partition to ha have size. Oops. Yeah. 
And so going forward, I'll, I'll, I'll just write this like this. So lambda is a partition of n. And um, what's important about these, so, so these are ideals. Uh, their their co-dimension is exactly uh, n. And uh, these are exactly the t fixed points. So these are uh, exactly the t fixed points. Right. So, so t acts by scaling. So it will it will just scale x and y. And so the each generator uh, is just a monomial. It will it will get sent to a multiple of itself if you act by an element of t. And, uh, and so the ideal is, is preserved. And these are all the, the t fixed points. Uh, so maybe a, a, here's a, an example. So uh, lambda is this partition 3, 2. So I will draw my partitions like this. Um, I know there are many different uh, conventions. Um, but then the ideal is generated by x cubed uh, x squared y and y squared. So the idea is, uh, here's how you can visualize this. You, you start filling in with monomials. Oops. Oops. Uh, Uh, okay, and um, these are the, the generators for the ideal at the end of each row. And then uh, because this is an ideal, you, you can move this way, right? So you can multiply by X or Y and you fill out. Um, so what this ideal is, uh, sort of pictorially, is it's, it's spanned by all of the monomials outside of the the diagram of the partition. Okay. And then um, if you look at the quotient, I lambda, let's just do it for this one. Uh, you get uh, what's, what's left. So all of the monomials inside. Uh, The diagram, and and that's why it has the correct dimension. So for every box in the diagram, uh, you have you have a, a basis element, and, and that that gives you a basis for the quotient. Okay, um, and then in terms of this Hilbert Chow morphism, uh, you know the the only t fixed point downstairs is is the origin, right? So. Uh, these all sit over they're the most singular part uh, of, of the quotient and copies of the point zero zero. Okay, so that's a, a little mini uh, course on Hilbert schemes of points in the plane and and now uh, comes the the connection. Okay, so Heyman's theorem. In the late 90s, I, I believe. Uh, so what Heyman proved, uh, here's one way to say it, is that there is an equivalence of categories. Uh, derived categories. So uh, coherent T equivariant coherent sheaves on Hill N with T cross SN equivariant coherent sheaves on uh, the plane, uh, two N dimensional plane. Okay. Um, 
So this side is related to that, uh, that K group I was, I was talking about on the previous slide. And uh, so Heyman proved that these two uh, derived categories are, are equivalent in, in a, by an explicit uh, equivalence, uh, which I, I probably won't, won't get into. Um, but this has a number of uh, nice properties. Okay, so uh, an equivalence of categories, uh, which- But is it a theorem of Bridge and King and Reed by any chance? Um, I think this version um, did, does not follow from uh, the Bridgeland King and Reed result. Ah, so with, with T um, variance. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, I thought I thought that result applied to a, a different uh, a different version of the Hilbert scheme. Um, I so. I but I but I could be wrong. No, no I, I think it really goes back to them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, maybe if I finish the statement. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, it, 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 no, maybe it it. It will then be proper to call it Heyman's theorem. Uh, so uh, certainly, it is it is a, a, an equivalence in in the same uh, spirit of that result. Mm -hmm. um, and um, maybe I'm not an expert enough to know um, who should have more more credit for this part of the statement. So, mm -hmm. so sorry if it's uh, incorrect, but that that should certainly be mentioned in the same breath that uh, Bridgeland King and Reed. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which. induces uh, an isomorphism of uh, k vector spaces. Uh, so uh, here's here's one way to look at it. So Uh, so we, we take all these together. So that's uh, from, from the beginning of studying Hilbert schemes and work of uh, Gronowski and, and Nakajima. This was, and, and maybe even earlier than that, this was an important idea to sort of put, put all these together um, and, uh, and then localize uh, with respect to the, the torus action. Uh, this is isomorphic to, uh, if, if you do the, the similar direct sum on the other side, um, then you'll get all symmetric functions. So I just call this lambda. So this is uh, symmetric functions over K in uh, X1 uh, Sorry, in infinitely many variables. Um, and so maybe this is the, the sort of final punchline that really makes uh, what I'm saying Heyman's theorem is that uh, such that uh, this uh, the class of the fixed point. So you have this T fixed point, you have the uh, skyscraper sheath at that fixed point, and, and these elements uh, give you uh, a basis it, for the localized uh, K theory. Uh, so this is sent to what's called H tilde lambda. And this is a, another version of P lambda. Okay, so uh, this is uh, called the uh, modified McDonald symmetric function. And, and what you should think is that it's some sort of cousin of P lambda. There's an explicit, uh, com completely explicit way to go between P lambda and, and H tilde. They're, they're, they're just different versions. Um, but from the geometry, what, what really comes out is this other version, this, this H tilde. Um, and uh, so uh, if I just write this down, um, this isomorphism, it's, it sort of doesn't have very much content. Um, if I just say isomorphism of K vector spaces, because I have a basis on the left, a basis on the right, of course it's an isomorphism. The point is that it actually comes from this uh, equivalence of, of categories. And, and a corollary of that 
is that uh, the McDonald positivity conjecture holds. And this, this follows from uh, properties of, of the equivalence of categories. Uh, so so what, what does this positivity conjecture say? It says if you take H tilde and expand in, uh, in sure polynomials, sure function, then the coefficient, uh, I think my labeling is, is backwards from the usual, so I, I need to put the mu here, lambda here. Um, these coefficients uh, at the beginning, so I started with K, which is the field of fractions uh, in Q and T, <clears throat> so rational functions. Uh, but, but here, uh, these are, let's use green. These are in polynomials in Q and T with, with non-negative integer coefficients. So this was conjectured by McDonald earlier on in, in the theory uh, that these, these cousins of P lambda, these H tildes have this wonderful uh, positivity property. Integrality, first of all, they're, they're polynomials in Q and T and then, and then positivity. Um, so this, this suggested some deeper uh, explanation, geometry or representation theory, for instance. And, and uh, so, Heyman's motivation was, was to prove this conjecture as, as I understand it and, and, and related conjecture. Okay. Um, I think that's what I wanted to say mainly about ordinary McDonald polynomials. Um, I'll move on now to wreath. Okay, so let's look at the, the wreath setting. Uh, okay, so let's Let's talk more generally at first. So let gamma and SL2C be a finite. So group kind of the main example um, for me and for the subject of Reith McDonald polynomials to, to date uh, is the cyclic case. So gamma is the set of all diagonal matrices and SL2C, so zeta, zeta inverse, where zeta uh, to the R is one. So zeta is an rth root of unity, okay? And uh, so this is a cyclic uh, of order R greater than or equal to one. Um, so this is sort of the main case uh, where things are known <laughs> um, and, and Later, I'll, I'll just assume for the rest of the talk, not, not quite yet, but later I'll assume that gamma is cyclic. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about Heyman's conjecture. Oops, come on, eraser. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be kind of a vague statement, but uh, let me just say, so they're, they're, the conjecture is that there exists an equivalence um, EB uh, de derived category T equivariant coherent sheaves on, um, on Hill. M, gamma, chi, and I'll explain that a little bit more below. Uh, this equivalence with uh, D, B, uh, 
So what, what do I want to say? Um, coherent sheaves. T plus gamma n. All right. Let's see. N. So now um, this equivalence, I'll explain some of the notation below, but equivalence with similar properties, uh, including positivity. Um, where? Okay. Um, so this, what's this chi thing? So he'll uh, m gamma chi. This is in Hilb gamma, uh, and this is a uh, component of the gamma fixed locus. And how, it, how are M and N related? Um, so this, this could actually be, be empty, but if it's, if it's not empty, uh, then, uh, well, for, for character. So character uh, gamma. So what I, I think what I wanted to say is if, if you take an arbitrary character, uh, you, might, you might get nothing uh, here. Um, but, but what this is, is this is the set of all of M, where uh, R mod I, the character of R mod uh, I is equal to this chi. So you fix a character of chi, of, of gamma, and ask for, uh, so, so because gamma is a subgroup of SL2C, it will act on everything. And this R mod I, this quotient, will be a representation, finite dimensional representation of gamma. And, uh, and you can ask for the ideals uh, where the quotient uh, has character chi. Okay. Uh, so this, is, this, this breaks up into components. Um, and uh, if you take a random chi, uh, it might, might be empty. Um, but if it's not empty, then it, it gives you a resolution so, fill them. Uh, just this is not really part of the conjecture, uh, but uh, just extra information. This is a resolution uh, for some. I'm sorry for a stupid question. Uh, your chi is a, a combination of irreducible characters, uh, isn't, is it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so it's, it's, it doesn't go to C, C star, uh, sort of, to, to oh, C. Oh, I see. It's not a homomorphism to C star. Oh, it's, oh, thank, thank you. Yeah, that, that's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so linear, it's a linear combination of irreducible. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. yeah, thank you. Um, so that's that's what this guy is, and 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 then that's how M and N are related. So um, two times N should be the the dimension of of this this Hilb M gamma chi over here. Uh, th there are nice ways to see see all this in terms of partitions, uh, um, but uh, what's what's left to explain? And, and gamma N is the reef product, right? So which I said at the beginning. But, uh, Okay, uh, so, so basically Heyman made a conjecture, which is that there, there's a similar equivalence in this McKay setting um, and, and has similar properties such as McDonald positivity. Um, so, so this was proved and, and it's the only case where I think anything is really known here. Um, so this is a theorem. Ezra Pickleberg, which says that uh, Heyman's conjecture holds. Uh, 
uh, for cyclic gamma, like in the example. Uh, so uh, this I'm going to assume Okay, um, so, so what do we get from this? Um, so one, one quick uh, note, this is, this is fantastic. Now uh, we get something like McDonald polynomials for, for the cyclic group gamma, and uh, it, it's a corollary of, of this theorem of Bezer, Kavnikov, and Finkelberg that, uh, that these objects also exhibit positivity in, in the McDonald sense. Um, just a quick note is that you know, gamma is actually a subgroup of T. Uh, so Hilb M gamma and Hilb M have the same T fixed points. Uh, which are the I lambdas. Where lambda is a partition of M. So in terms of the indexing data, uh, we have the same indexing set. We have all, all partitions of M. Um, okay. Um, so just uh, in a nutshell, what, what happens here is that at the level of K theory, uh, this yields uh, they're, they're positive brief McDonald functions. Um, so I'm going to denote them H lambda gamma. And what this is, is it's, it's the image, H, H tilde lambda gamma, uh, the image of, of the fixed point I lambda under the, the equivalence or the, the isomorphism. Uh, uh, and so this is something a little bit different here is that this belongs to not just symmetric functions, but what you might call multi-symmetric functions. So I have a tensor power of symmetric functions uh, where I, is the set of all irreducible representations of gamma, uh, which I will think of as uh, Z mod RZ. Okay. Dan, so, I'm sorry, do, do I understand correctly that you kind of combine all chi together or? Right, uh, right, yes. Let me, let me, I'll write it uh, on the next, next page, yeah. Perfect. Thank uh, you. Uh, so you get these uh, and, their cousins, T e lambda, okay. So we have, uh, there's also a P version defined uh, in, in a similar way, uh, sorry, gamma, in an analogous way uh, to how you go from H tilde in the usual McDonald to, to P, there's this transformation, there's a similar thing going on here. Uh, right, so so what it looks like is this. So you take the direct sum of all these uh, gamma, and then you you could throw in the chi, but it's not really necessary. So just put them all together, and then uh, what happens is that this is isomorphic to um, <clears throat> actually many copies of this. Uh, so this is, this is kind of a formal placeholder, you can think. It actually means something uh, in, in representation theory in terms of uh, ver a vertex representation, uh, but let me leave it there for now. Maybe I'll see more later and alpha is in Q. And, uh, 
And this is the root lattice of, uh, of GL R, where R is the order of gamma. So what you have, in fact, is, is many copies of this tensor power of uh, symmetric functions if you take all of these together. And then if you start with an I lambda here, Uh, what what you get over here is you get this h tilde uh, lambda, um, <clears throat> you get h tilde lambda times e to the minus. There's a particular guy here where um, gamma is equal to what's called the core of, uh, of lambda, something from from partition theory. So. I, I can say more later, maybe, but um, what what happens if, if you start with lambda, there's a particular component that, that you land in on the right hand side. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, this is this is related to the chi, but it's a, it's a little bit different. So so but that that's sort of what the whole setup looks like. So then sort of the motivating question is, uh, question is, what are the, so I'll focus mainly on these guys. Uh, what are they uh, explicitly? Can we get our hands on them beyond this uh, uh, rather deep uh, geometry, this, uh, these equivalences? Um, Okay, and so th this is what we did. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what we did, and then I'll try to tell you a little bit about where, where it comes from. Um, okay, so Reef McDonald. Dan, you mean in this question, you mean in the present of gamma? Yeah, so H lambda gamma? Oh, yeah, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Uh, Reef McDonald. Okay, uh, so what we have is we have this I is Z mod RZ. These are really the vertices in the McKay graph uh, for, for gamma. And uh, what's, so the McKay graph is the cyclic quiver and not accident, not coincidentally, um, the, these Hilbert schemes, the, the gamma fixed, com, these, the components of the gamma fixed uh, locus of the Hilbert scheme are Nakajima quiver varieties uh, for, for the cyclic quiver and, and the one-dimensional framing. Um, so that the, the, the quiver is central uh, to, to the whole theory. Uh, but let me just draw a picture for what I'm going to do here. So if you, um, if you want to have difference operators, you really need to have finitely many variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix some collections of variables uh, at each vertex, okay? And uh, and what these these correspond to is is this these factors here, right? So um, these guys, right? So I have i many factors, so I could think I have symmetric. I have I have polynomials in in all of these variables, and and they're symmetric in the polynomials at each vertex. Um, so let me let me write a little bit more. So n dot uh, this is a dimension vector. So n i is a non-negative integer, and then I'm going to call this thing x n dot the collection of all these variables x i k, where i is an i. And k goes from uh, one up to ni. So ni is going to give me the number of variables at uh, at vertex i in the graph. And uh, we're going to have a product of symmetric groups. Okay, and this will act on on polynomials in these variables. And um, so I'm going to have this space. Lambda n dot, 
which will be k polynomials in these variables, which are symmetric in the uh, pro with respect to this product of symmetric groups. So, okay. Uh, and then I have this other space, lambda i, and there's a restriction map here. So if I have a thing here, I can, this, there are really infinitely many variables on the left, but I can just restrict. So that will be my notation. Uh, for that, so it's restricted finitely many variables. Okay, um, let me see. Um, <clears throat> I think I want to go to a, a new page so that I have enough space. Here. Um, okay, so so this is this is the setup to. One of the main points is if you if you want some difference operators like what we had at the very beginning, you really need um, finitely many variables. Right? So difference operators make sense in that context. Okay, uh, so so here we here's what we do in in uh, OS in this in this work that's uh, this uh, short archive paper. Um, so we construct uh, explicit difference operators uh, m i for each i in i um, of the form. So kind of the key of what we're doing is that is that everything is very explicit and concrete. Um, so we have uh, mi looks like this. So it's a sum over some, op some combinatorial objects, which I call j underline. So this is j and x underline, which I'll unpack in, in just a minute. And there's a sign and there's uh, something here. Um, and then there's a translation. Okay, so the basic structure is similar. So uh, this is an explicit rational function, which um, is kind of too big to write down uh, in a talk, but it is very manageable and, and explicit. And, and quite quite nice. Um, so that is like uh, so that a is going to be an analog of of uh, this thing that I started. With this oops. Uh, this this part of the McDonald operator, and then there will be a part that, that corresponds to this. So. So I'll, I'll do an example to show you what, what the T looks like. To me, the, this translation is one of the most interesting new features here um, for these Reith McDonald operators. Um, and so what are, what's J and everything here? So J is a subset. of vertices. So I choose some vertices and uh, for the ith operator, this the element i needs to be in there. Okay. So it's a non-empty subset it has to contain i. And then uh, what this is, is it's a, I have these finitely many variables. So I choose one. For each of my designated vertices in J, I choose a variable. Okay. So this is like in the original McDonald operator, I summed, so I didn't, McDonald did, uh, summed over all K, and that's that's a choice of uh, XK, right? So choice of single variable. Okay. Uh, so what's new here, interesting new structure, 
is that we sum over all um, choices of variables where I, I have to choose a, a variable at vertex i and then maybe some more, right? And um, so here's, here's how things look. So let's say uh, I have five. Five uh, vertices in my quiver. So R equals five. And I choose, um, I don't know. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to take the operator uh, for zero, for I equals zero. So I have to choose a variable here. So let's say I choose X zero to the seventh. Uh, this is the seventh variable there. And then uh, maybe one more over here. X. Uh, at vertex three, uh, the fourth variable there, and then and then nothing else. So my j, so i would be zero, for instance, j would be zero one, x bar zero would be x zero seven, x bar, uh, sorry, three would be x three four. And, Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. Dan, do you mean that J is zero three? Yes, thank you. And X three is X three three. Ah, three four. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. thank you. Um, so here's how this works. So what is the, this? Is the new kind of thing? So if that's the choice, then I have this operator T Q J. And what it does is it. You know, the ordinary McDonald operator takes an X and replaces it by Q times X, right? This one uh, also rotates. So this is going to send this to Q. I think it's three. I'll show you why in a sec. So uh, X three four and X three four Q squared X zero. So in addition to these Q shifts, I'm also rotating uh, the variables. So um, where does this uh, come from? So I want to know what to replace this with. I go this way. And the power of Q that, that I take here is, is the distance, right? So I, I went over three edges to get there, one, two, three. Uh, so that's why I have a Q cube there. And then for this one, oops. I just have a Q squared, and that's that's this. Okay. I'm sorry, Dan. Could you please repeat once again what does your operator do with other variables? Nothing. Yeah, it just just leaves them. So oh, uh, oh I see. So it, it only op, it only moves these. So just like uh, the the original um, the original operator only does something um, here. Everything else is, is the same. Um, this operator, um, it's only doing something uh, to these these two variables, these two, uh, and so all other um, Okay. But I have a, a stupid problem uh, in case um, there is just one uh, um, set of, well, one, one color. Uh, so we're back in the original McDonald's setting. Then similarly, this green distance is just zero. Uh, right. but, but in McDonald's case, you did, did multiply it by Q. It's, but, so I would, I would say the distance is, is one, actually. So be, uh, you, go, yeah. you have to go over the edge. Uh, in the Jordan quiver. So yeah, it's one because you, you take the number of points in between and then add one. I see. Thanks. Zero plus one. Thanks. Yeah. So so even in that case, it makes sense, and that that's a very satisfying thing actually. That uh, uh, so note this operator is is the original uh, McDonald operator. 
So the, the rational function looks much more complicated in general, but it, it miraculously uh, simplifies uh, in the case that uh, R equals one. If gamma is trivial, the trivial group, so gamma. So as far as I know, this kind of shift has not uh, really shown up. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, uh, there, there's this one case of it uh, that something kind of similar shows up in an earlier paper of Shoji. Um, and what that would be is if you take, uh, you have to take a variable at every vertex, okay? So at all five vertices, then you always just shifting by Q and, and rotating cyclically. So I, I, I did see that previously in a paper of Shoji, but not this, this more general type of thing. And so, so what we do is we construct these operators and then we prove uh, that uh, BMI act diagonally. On, um, on the the Reef McDonald cell, I guess. Uh, I'm going to really call them polynomials now. So it has to be p lambda, but you go to these finitely many variables. But may I ask one, one more stupid question? Um, yeah. What do you have uh, two variables of um, color three and one variable of color zero? Ah. Then how do they? Uh, this, is, uh, this is not allowed yet. Uh, so, so, what I, uh, so I should have emphasized here. So choice of uh, one, ah. one variable at each vertex in J. Now, uh, if you want higher order McDonald operators, which is that's sort of the in progress part of the work, uh, you you can choose multiple variables at each vertex, uh, and then then more interesting things will happen. Uh, uh, does that answer? Uh, I'm, no, I'm, no. Uh, I'm confused. Uh, but uh, for for usual McDonald operators, you could have a uh, capital N many. Uh, variables right and here here you only can have a uh, uh, gamma many variables not more I'm no no no, no. Um, any number of variables uh, so this this choice of one variable that i'm talking about is just uh just for this translation so that's like in in the mcdonald operator you have t q x k yes so this is t q uh, for some choice of variables but i but i have ah. It's it's ah. a it's a sum over all choices. Ah, uh, oh, I see. Sorry, sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, okay, and then uh, uh, I'm sorry. May I ask a question about this theory? So you are you are saying there exists the polynomials p lambda? Yes, this is the statement. So they 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 are not defined at this point, right? Oh no! They, oh, sorry, sorry. I need a gamma. Yeah, yeah, but did you have those polynomials before? Yes. So, so there? this is where they come from. They come from uh, from the Bezrukhavnikov and Finkelberg theorem that uh, there there is this equivalence, and so you get these. Uh, if if you go to K theory, you you get these uh, H tildes, which are the images of the fixed points. So these are these are these exist. They're they're the images of the the fixed points uh, over here. And you are saying that you scale scale them somehow, or uh, there's a there's a transformation. So it, it normally for ordinary McDonald polynomials to go from H tilde to P, you do a series of things. You do these platistic transformations, and then you multiply by you you make them monic, um, and and so you can do a similar thing. That's that's sort of easy uh, okay. here to go from H tilde gamma uh, to P gamma. Okay. Yeah, so, so there's no problem with, with sort of uh, existence uh, in, in, in an abstract sense, but in a, in a constructive way, this actually gives you a way to, to see the, 
what these are. Yeah, direct access to them. Yeah, so a direct characterization. Um, so not only do they act diagonally, so they um, that that uniquely determines the the p the p lambda. So the the, the joint spectrum is is simple. Right. So um, okay. So uh, without telling you exactly what these you know are, that's that's the shape of them. And where do they come from? Okay. So so here's the representation theory. Um, so the MI arise from uh, the quantum toroidal algebra. Uh, so this is U. I'm, this is how I'll denote it, UQT tor of type GLR. And what this is, is it's sort of like a, a double quantum affine algebra. So if you start with GLR, it's, uh, it's, there's the quantum affine GLR, and this is sort of a double quantum affine GLR. Um, it has a Drinfeld presentation. So you have E, K, H, I, K, F, I, K. So I, so I, K is in Z. And uh, this is why it's double affine, because I is sort of already uh, the vertex set for the affine Dinkin diagram of type A. I is the cyclic quiver vertex set. And then K is this uh, sort of uh, loop uh, loop index, so that's that's the sort of additional affine direction that makes it double. Then I'm sorry, I asked a question before you go forward. Could mm -hmm. you please get back to the theorem? Yeah. Uh, so uh, so here, what is lambda here? Is it a collection of uh, partitions or so? so what, uh, what is that? Lambda is yeah. So. Lambda is just a partition. One partition, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. But, and but, but, but uh, so, right. So over here, uh, you have a basis given by all partitions, these I lambdas. And over here, the natural basis is more indexed by multi partitions. And so you have a, a tuple of partitions and then an alpha. And, uh, there, there's a combinatorial bijection called the, um, uh, there's the core and the quotient. And so um, in this whole setup, the, the core uh, tells you uh, which component with respect to Q you're in. And the quotient sort of tells you things here. Um, it will tell you the leading term uh, in terms of the sure sure basis. So here, maybe, maybe I can say one thing like this. Here's a spot for it, actually. So, um, so you have the quotient uh, with respect to R of lambda, and what this is is it's a tuple. of partitions and uh, and then you have the the gamma which is the four uh, uh, lambda these two these two pieces of information the quotient and core are equivalent to to lambda so there's a there's a bijection called the core quotient decomposition um, and over here so this is a multi partition so each lambda is a lambda superscript i is a partition. Um, and then if you look at um, p lambda gamma, what will it look like? It will look like s lambda zero um, in the variables at 
uh, at zero times S. So it's the product of sure polynomials. Plus lower terms. Lower terms requires more explanation, but uh, which I don't want, maybe don't want to get into. But um, so it has a leading term uh, that's that's given by this product of sure functions, and that's how the multipartition comes in. Um, I see. Okay, and then one one more question. So uh, can can the eigenvalue be written explicitly? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, and in, and in fact, uh, what's nice about it um, is that it's uh, the eigenvalues. Let me just put it here. Um, mm, I, maybe I shouldn't write it. It will get too too complicated. But it's basically the same as this. Um, where was it? The eigenvalues are just like this, uh, but they're graded in a sense. So you 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 take off certain pieces and put them with the i. So instead of at one m, you have r different m's m m i, and uh, and you take sort of a great an i graded version of this, and that's exactly uh, what the eigenvalues are. So you you split this up into into some ends. Maybe I should write it. Let me write it. So, um, so you have um, I m i equals uh, the coefficient of uh, chi to the i in. Um, let me say it like this, coefficient of chi i in um, the sum q t to the n minus k, n is the total number of variables. So yeah, I have it written this. It's sort of an unusual, maybe not what you would expect for the. Uh, There it is. Okay. Um, t to the n minus k. Yep. And then chi k minus lambda k. Um, this is the expression. Uh, so this is uh, this is understood. Um, mod r. And then chi i of zeta zeta inverse is equal to zeta to the r, zeta to the i. This is the irreducible rep representation, irreducible character of, uh, of gamma uh, indexed by i. And, uh, and so this is what I meant when I said this is it. It's an I graded version of the original eigenvalue. So this is kind of the original eigenvalue, but then I break it into these pieces. Okay. Is the result a complex number? Yes. Zeta? So there's no like, so like you have to refine the integrability, right? 
So like coefficients are no integer are not integers anymore. Uh, so so chi is a character. Yeah. So what what is this thing is it's some kind of generating function. So and then I want to take uh, take this coefficient. Uh, so this is uh, oh sorry sorry yes yeah, yeah no no worries. Uh, so this is in uh, this is in uh, representation ring of t cross gamma. I think is probably the right way to say it. So it, it looks like uh, I have a Laurent polynomial in U and T, and then I have um, I have um, this chi. It's, it's really enough just to take chi one uh, mod chi one to the R equals um, one. Maybe I want that. Um, yeah. So this this is like a placeholder here. <clears throat> so I guess I just want to say the uh, the eigenvalues. I. Same eigenvalues uh, as in the usual case, but they're they're split up according to the residue. Um, yeah, uh, I guess like uh, this is all times. No, this is uh, this. Times that, so that's that's the eigenvalue. Okay, let me let me go back here. So, um, this these operators they really come from the the quantum toroidal algebra, and um, and um, I, I should mention because I don't know if I'll I'll fit it in otherwise is that we're really we're using uh, a result of Josh Wynn. Um, just wanted to make sure I. Uh, at least vaguely uh, give him credit here uh, for for an important uh, foundational result. Um, so you have these um, Drinfeld generators, you have these Carton ones, which um, uh, generate uh, a Heisenberg algebra on this, this is the y-axis here. Um, and uh, so, so the relations are like the uh, the relations in the quantum loop algebra. So you put these into currents, and then you can write everything down explicitly. And and what we're using is uh, there's a natural action here on um, on this space V which showed up uh, in the equivalence. So this is called the vertex. representation of, of the quantum toroidal algebra. And so uh, basically each of these, uh, if, you, if you put these into currents, these generating series, they, they act by vertex operators uh, on this space. And uh, this K direction, so this K is going this way. And what this is related to is the symmetric function degree. Okay. So if we want eigenoperators, we should really be looking uh, where k is zero. So where the, where the degree is zero. The problem is that this, this piece that we need, we, we need a subalgebra here, is not naturally uh, available in this Drinfeld presentation. So there's, there's something called the Miki automorphism. which interchanges the two affine directions. So this is sort of double affine. It has two affine uh, directions. And, and this, uh, you, don't, you don't see them 
directly in the Drinfeld presentation. You just see one of them. Um, but, but the Miki automorphism tells you um, that you have this horizontal horizontal Eisenberg. It's actually commutative subalgebra. Um, so from the Drinfeld presentation, you get this vertical Eisenberg. Um, from the Carton part. And uh, there's this remarkable automorphism that, that changes vertical to something new and, and the new thing we call uh, horizontal. And it acts by degree zero on symmetric functions because it's sitting horizontally. And, and this is where the eigen operators come from. So it, it has its own generators, which are, they're not the same ones that you see in the Drinfeld presentation. So it has some new generators. And uh, the MIs are, are in degree one. So the, the MI really comes from um, those. Okay. So uh, I'll just say uh, to, to finish um, what, what, what we're doing. Um, With, with Josh is we're, we're trying to push this further and get a higher um, McDonald's, Reef McDonald operators. Uh, corresponding to the, the other, you know, the, the higher degree generators here. Okay. And, um, I think maybe I'll I'll stop there and you know I'm ready to answer any more questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, so are are there any questions? Can you give an example of uh, such a polynomial? Sure, sure. So um, let me show you. Let, let's do this. So let's do. Um, <clears throat> I'll say something general about the, the shape, and then I'll, and then I'll pull it up on the computer because they, they get kind of big. Uh, so um, let's do this. So if you look at um, let's look at example. So let's do um, Hilb three. Okay. Um, T. Okay, so let's first look at the fixed point. So we have we have three elements here. Um, <clears throat> I uh, this one. I this one. And I this one. And um, this. <clears throat> what does this hill three gamma look like? This has dimension two, and it's uh, <clears throat> you know if you if you if you don't put the gamma there, uh, so I should say uh, I want to take r is three, so gamma, so uh, m is three, and actually r is three, so the order of gamma is three. Uh, this has one component. Um, <clears throat> if you don't put the gamma there, Hilb three has dimension six, uh, but, but with the gamma, it just has dimension uh, two. And, um, and what you have is for each of these, you have, um, Let's do this. Lambda, we have the quotient, and we have the core. So we have 
this guy, this guy. The core is always actually the empty partition for these. Um, <clears throat> the way you get the core, uh, it's the three core, is you start with your partition and you remove uh, ribbons of size three. So a ribbon is, it looks like a ribbon. Uh, it has no, it's connected a uh, skew shape that has no two by two squares. And in fact, each of these is a ribbon, the, these partitions. So you can remove a ribbon of size three from each of them. And uh, to get to the core, you, you keep doing that until you can't anymore. Uh, but so, so you can get down to the empty. And then for our conventions, the, the quotient sort of uh, records how these, uh, these, these are all ribbons, how, how they get removed. And so each of them has one ribbon. And so the quotient here is uh, the partition one, empty, empty. So it's a tuple of partitions. Okay. Uh, so R is three. So I have uh, vertices zero, one, two. And this is at, you know, at uh, this is my lambda zero. Lambda two. And now here I get the empty, one, empty, 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 one. And so these are also listed, the order is, is kind of still dominance order, but it's restricted to uh, partitions with the same core. But so the, the order is like this, the triangularity is like this. So here, here's an example, sort of a uh, not so serious example uh, is if I do this one, there's there's nothing below, uh, so I just get s uh, s uh, one. So the sure function index by one. Uh, so this is just going to be an elementary symmetric function uh, in uh, the variables at vertex two. Or if you like, it's. Uh, it's one, in terms of the, the tensor product, it's one tensor, one tensor S one. And then this is just E one, this is just, so it's, it's the sum of all the variables. Okay, so, so that one, because there's nothing lower, uh, it has to be that, uh, it's just, that's, that's the leading term. And, uh, and then there can't be anything lower, but, but here you start to get, uh, This guy is uh, is going to be so I look at the quotient and that's my leading term, so it's one. Uh, let me write it like this: tensor S one tensor one plus uh, a lower term. So I have a rational function, and then I have one tensor one tensor. That's one. And then, uh, and then this guy looks like S1 tensor one tensor one plus a coefficient of one tensor S1 tensor one plus a coefficient of uh, one tensor one tensor S1. Uh, so those are the, the lower terms. So. What I'm actually using is I, I go to this, this quotient thing, which uh, I'm not really telling you, but it, it has to do with how the ribbons are removed from the partition. Um, it's a, it's start with a, a partition, I get a tuple of partitions. Okay. And then I'm actually working in, in this uh, space. So um, with, with this basis rather. And, uh, and so these coefficients here, let me, they're, they're rational functions. So I have a coefficient and I'll show them to you on the computer. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let me stop here. I switch to my other screen here. Okay, I think, can you see this? Yes. Okay. Um, it's here. Okay, so here they are. So 
this is P111. And this is just the one that is the product of sure functions. This is the next one. And, and here, I guess the coefficients aren't too bad. I could have maybe written them. Um, but this has that one lower term, and this has the uh, two lower terms. And then, you know, uh, they, here are more, more examples. This is, this is just kind of what they look like. So uh, hopefully that, that gives you some impression uh, of, of what they look like. And which coefficients are in general uh, more accessible uh, of the modified uh, polynomials or of these uh, p polynomials? Uh, I think these are these are more accessible. The, uh -huh. the triangularity really helps you if if you're trying to construct them. Uh -huh. um, of course, the the coefficients of the h tildes are are ge are more geometric and and have better properties. Uh, they're actually well, I can show you. Let me. They're, they're actually better, um, but maybe less accessible. So uh -huh. <laughs> like the, the coefficients of H are much smaller. Let's go to these. These are the same ones. Uh -huh. um, so uh, what's different here though is the support. So for the H's, the support is spread over everything. There's no triangularity, uh, but uh -huh. the coefficients are much nicer. <laughs> uh, and, and they continue to, they're always, this is the positivity uh -huh. uh, here. Um, and, and the P's, however, uh, the coefficient, the trade-off is that uh, you have the triangularity, which makes things easier to compute, but the coefficients are a little bit nastier. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the integrality, so in the on the P side of McDonald, there's the, the P and the J, there's the integral form, mm -hmm. and there's an explicit scalar that goes between them. And I, I don't think that's actually known, um, uh, maybe conjecturally known. Uh, uh, in the in the wreath case, so what what is the scalar that you should use to clear the denominators here? Uh, so it's much trickier. Ah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have an analog of Daha here? Like I would. Great question. Yeah, I, I would like to, um, but I, I don't know. So um, on the one hand, um, in the usual McDonald case, you have this uh, elliptic Hall algebra or quantum toroidal GL1. And, and you can think of this as, as a limit of uh, part of the Daha, part of the spherical Daha. Um, so in some sense, the, the quantum toroidal algebra is the generalization of that. However, um, it would be really nice to have something that's sort of truly Daha and something like non-symmetric uh, wreath McDonald polynomials. And that, that's something that I would like to know how to do, but, but I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and could you please repeat, uh, like uh, you've got this representation of quantum toroidal right. and you computed um, like these uh, commuting operators. And you know for some reason that eigenvectors are uh, like the same that come from this geometric construction. Right. Uh, Who's credit actually, is this? This is actually the result of Josh Wynn. Uh, so, so Josh proved that. Uh, let me let me go back here. So, um, I think I can say it very clearly. So, um, so we have. Let's call this something. So let's call this. Uh, uh, let's call this isomorphism star. And, uh, and so what Josh actually proved is that uh, this star respects UTOR actions. So there's a natural action of the, uh, and the up to Miki. <laughs> um, 
there's a natural action of uh, the quantum toroidal algebra on both sides here. Uh, on this side, it's, it's like uh, the, the action uh, quantum loop algebras on K theory of quiver varieties due to Nakajima and uh, Gronowski. So, so this is sort of, um, uh, there's a natural action over here, geometrically defined uh, of the quantum toroidal. And there's, a, there's an action here called the vertex representation. And, and one way to, to say what Josh proved is that uh, this isomorphism uh, respects those two actions up to this twist by the Miki automorphism. Uh, so so there, you, have to, you have to use this Miki automorphism, but these two actions can be related. And, and that's how you know that uh, you have these eigen functions and that they're actually giving you the same <laughs> thing that, that you started with over here. And like uh, relation to, to Bridgeland story, when you like had this uh, equivalence of derived categories is rather- That's right. It's rather straightforward from this. Uh, so I'm a little bit fuzzy on this. Um, I'm not really a geometer by training, but um, it was my understanding that this equivalence did not immediately follow from the Bridgeland King Reed result, uh, but it but it is related. Um, so let me. But I, I could be could be wrong about that. No, no, you're, you're right. You, you, you need uh, the existence of Prochezi bundle, and then it follows by BKR. Right. But this existence okay. proved by, by Heyman. Right. So, so, so Heyman's, yeah, probably a better way to say it is that Heyman proved this, this vector bundle exists, this thing called the Prochezi bundle on Hill Ben. And then from knowing that, that that is a, is a vector bundle, um, you, you get this, this equivalent. It induces this equivalence. Yeah. So um, I think I, I was trying to avoid talking about the Prochezi bundle, but maybe that was uh, a, a mistake here. So, um, so Heyman's result makes use of the Bridgeland King Reed uh, result by means of this, this Prochezi bundle. Uh, it's another like ignorant question. Uh, so, 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 uh, so this positivity, you expanded uh, H polynomials like pletistic in terms of non pletistic sure, right? Yes, yes. Uh, mm. And here it's uh, so over here on this side, it's it's this uh, tensor product of sure. So, uh, in, in this. Mm -hmm. uh, you take the ten tensor product of sure functions, not non plethistic. Yes. Yeah. What this is, is this is the, um, the fiber of the Brochese bundle at the fixed point. So that's what the, the equivalence gives you is that this, this, this point, this function is the, is the fiber. And, and that's a, that's uh, there's a Frobenius map. So you have a representation of, of gamma and, and you get a, you get an object here with the Frobenius map. Further questions? Okay, thank you very much then. Again, let me stop the recording. Thank, thank you all uh, very much for listening and for your questions.